All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to class. This is our second week Zoom session. Hope you have had a nice week so far. Um, and semester is going well. Any question before we start? So I have made available um, the lecture materials for today in Iron. Um, so we have access to the lecture slides and also a couple of um, Excel files that we're going to do the modeling today. And I am recording this meeting, so it's going to be available in Iron. Any question, guys? All right. Okay, so let's have a very short review of what we covered last week. Um, then we're gonna move to the next uh, lecture. All right, so we talked about spreadsheet modeling in the first part was last week. Um, we also talked about influence charts. So we said that it's, it's a very good practice um, that when you want to build a model, First, um, to do a little bit chart of like pre modeling stuff um, that we do to figure out all the relationship between different parts of the system. So, figure out the system, what is the output, what are the decisions, what are the inputs, and what are the relationship between different parts of the system, um, and what are the decision variables, how they are related to each other. And based on that uh, understanding that you get, after that, you move to the spreadsheet model. Right? And so that's called the influence chart. And you also learned that is a very good practice to use some standards and convention. So for example, they said that in the book, they use the gray rectangle for the output or the object that you want to say compute or um, optimize. You use the blue rectangle for um, inputs fixed data, and then we have most of our cells going to be computation calculation that we don't really um, need to emphasize. So that's why we leave it blank or white rectangle. And then we have the decision variable that we show them by a red, red oval or red rectangle. And later on, when we have a simulation, um, we are facing stochasticity in our system. So we're gonna use green rectangle to represent um, the random variables. And I also showed you how to there I uploaded in my styles Excel file. So whenever you want to actually build a model, um, you could, what you could do is you can open up the my, my style file. Um, and open up a new tab and build your model there is to use the styles of input you know, bluish, um, output grayish, um, decision variable red. So we can use that style automatically embedded in that. Or what you could do is, as I showed you last week, you can open up the Maya styles and open up your um, Excel file that you want to build your model in, and then go to Maya styles and input uh, or merge it. So um, this is how it looks. Let me open up my styles. All right, so you should see, you should be able to see an Excel file. This is the Excel file. All right, uh, again, I have to remind you that like last week, it is possible that I might be talking about a specific screen that I'm not really showing you that screen. So please remind me if you are not seeing what I'm talking about. Okay, so right now I'm sharing with you the Maya style Excel file. So it shows the Excel styles that I have for you that we talked about it last week. So the output are shown by this grayish, input blue, most calculated are blue, blank, or white, decision variables are red, random variables are um, greenish. So what you could do, you could actually open up this 
and um, just make a new tab, uh, Google Sheet here, and then you know name it your whatever you want. My model, say. Then I start to do your modeling here, and then you have access to the style. For example, my input. You want this to be, say, your your input. So you're gonna go okay, my input, and say this is your decision value. So you're gonna go decision value, and this is your output. So you're gonna go this output. Right. So you could do this, or you could do is leave this open without creating a new Google Sheet for the tab. And then open up your um, another Google Excel or Excel file, sorry, Google. Another Excel file that you want to build your modeling. So this is a, as you see, it's block two, so it doesn't have a name, I haven't said it. So here you can create your model. It's a good practice to always name and save like a, a very standard name. So you could remember it later on, you know, um, again, access to it, your model, for example. And then here again, you can go to the cell styles. As you see, I don't have the um, output input that I had there. So, but my styles Excel file is open. So I go to merge style and it shows me my styles file here. So I can click it OK. And now I can see all the styles that I created here. Calculated, decision value, input, output, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's that. So, all right, let's go back to the Okay, um, so again, start with an influence chart. And also, also start from when, when, when you do influence chart, you will always start with the end in mind. So you have your output there, and then you try to figure out the steps before that, or the inputs of variables or computation that goes behind the beyond that or before that one step again back um, what goes to that calculated cells again one step back what goes to that calculated cell until you get uh, to the very input basic or beginning uh, input that there is no further going back right and after you find all the computation all the relationship you can move to excel Okay, um, so we talked about the assignment zero or actually the, um, a, a simple test or 20 question that um, can um, assess your skills in Excel. Um, also, I showed you Excel diagnostic test and Excel tutorial. We went over two models, the tipping model and also the simple profit model, if you remember. Um, so that's what they did. And also we learned about name range that you can actually name it uh, a cell. Um, so usually cells in Excel have say D1, B, B2, B3, they, they have just regular names. So if you want to, um, it's a good practice to specify what uh, input or decision variable or output it is. So you can actually do range to do that and also we use the one-way data table and two-way data table to um, use a lot of computation automatically. All right so let's just start our lecture for this week. Introduction to spiritual modeling part two. Okay, and here. All right, there we go. Okay, so last week we um, went over the first part, which is the second part. Um, so, again, some rules to follow try to be consistent. The cellar styles. 
um, follow the Miley style. I personally prefer to have the output in yellowish color because the output generally is the most important. If it's not as, if it's not more important than the input, it's um, as important, right? So, um, but the, the book goes, the textbook goes with grayish for output and, um, uh, for example, blue for input and random variable grain and the decision variable object, for example. So, but try to be consistent. Uh, so it's a good practice for your future reference and also when you work in a group. Um, you could also create your own cell. Okay? So um, if you have, for example, more complicated situation that you kind of wanted to create another um, a style that we need to specify a cell, you can actually do that. Um, let me again open up the styles here. This is how you would do it. So suppose that you want to create another style cell here. Say I want it to be okay, my style cell. You want it to be, for example, aligned in the middle. You want it to be bold. You want it to be in a different font. So, Funny. Um, now you want it to be, for example, um, purple. The font you want to be, the color you want to be, white. Right. And then after you created your own cell style, you can go to cell style and then say new cell style. Okay. Here also you can specify whatever you want um, the, the alignment cell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you click OK, and it's going to be created. You can also name it here. So right now, it's going to appear as a style one here. You can say, I don't know, um, um, say middle point. Right? Read OK, and it's going to appear right here, middle point. So this is how you would create your own self -style. Not on the same piece. So let's go back to other pictures here. Have to see each other. Right. Oh, that's it. You covered that one. I wanted to cover. All right. Automation recalculation in Excel. I'm not sure if any of you had this problem. Um, first of all, I am using a Windows a PC here. So what what I show you here is based on PC or Windows, Microsoft, um, Excel in, in Windows. Um, suppose that your table doesn't automatically, when you created it, okay, does not automatically calculate numbers. Okay, if it doesn't do that, um, it's possible that you, there is a possibility that you can actually two way to fix that. Okay, so let me go to this cell right here. And I have to open up another. Right, let me open up an Excel file here from the previous week. Right. All right, so this is the my profit Excel model that we did last week. So this is a one way table. If you remember, um, this is the profit model. So in the profit model, we the company was making a product and was selling it. And the selling price was $30. The cost per unit was $14. And the fixed cost was $10,000. And the demand was $1,000. And we suppose that they exactly made $1,000. Um, so total revenue is just going to be selling price multiplied by um, the demand. And the total cost is just going to be fixed cost and um, plus the Value cost. And then the difference between revenue and cost is going to be your profit. Okay. So what if you want you want to, you wanted to do, suppose you wanted to do what if analysis? For example, you say that okay, what if the demand was not 
10,000 or 1,000 was say 2,000, it was zero, it was like 1,500 or it was 5,000. So instead of like doing all the calculation again, you could just create a one-way table. What is a one-way table? A one-way table is when you want to do what if analysis on the impact of uh, changing of a value of one input on several or one on, on or several outputs. So for example, here, I wanted to see what if the demand changes, different values for different values of demand. I wanted to see what would happen on the total revenue, total cost and total profit, okay? So instead of um, changing the demand here to zero and again to 1,000 and again to 2,000, again to 300, 4,000, whatever number of different what if analysis you wanted to do. And instead of doing that, I can actually create a demand, a, a one-way table, right? So one-way table, um, I put the, uh, first of all, I'm gonna put uh, the, uh, the input that I want to change it uh, for do that, what if analysis on based on the, the changes on that specific cell. So I'm gonna say, for example, the zero, 1,000, 2,000, say 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, whatever number you want to do. So you can do whatever number. And then on the other column, you can specify what um, computation you want to do, okay? So for example, here you want, you want to compute the total revenue, total cost, and total profit, right? So uh, you're going to leave the first row after the demand blank and start from zero and 1,000 whatever. You list your all values here. And then total revenue here on the, the, the row that you have the cell blank on the demand, you're going to actually uh, reference it to the total revenue that you have in the model, okay? So total revenue um, was here. So this is, as you see here, B10, okay? So B10 is here. Um, um, so here in this model, it doesn't show the name range that we used. So name range, if you look here, it this says cell B4, right? Cell B4, the name is B4, okay? And the next cell we, here, it says B, Five, right? B five. This is B six. Okay, but it, it would be difficult. Um, re it has difficulty readability. Um, so what you could do is you can actually use the name range, range name. Um, so you're gonna select all these. And you're gonna go to formulas. Then you're gonna go to create from selection, and then you make sure that the left column is checked. So this. What it's gonna do is it's gonna rename the cells on the right hand side based on the left hand side um, labels. Okay, so for example, this 30, it's in B4. So right now it's B4, it's gonna change it to selling price. The next cell, B5, its name is B5, it's gonna change it to unit price. Okay, so you know, if I hit OK, see right now it's not B4, it's selling price. It's not B5, it's unit cost. It's not B7, B6, it's fixed cost, okay? So you can do this for um, these other cells as well. So this would actually increase the readability of your model. All right, so we were on the one-way table. So one-way table on the total revenue that you want to com compute automatically for the first row that you left blank on the demand, you're gonna uh, make it equal to um, the total revenue, okay? So total revenue. So it says total revenue, and this is equal to total cost, so total cost, and this is equal to total profit, okay? Now you're gonna select from, starting from the blank cell on the demand, and you're gonna select all of the table, not the labels above it, okay? And then you're gonna to go to data. You're gonna to go to the forecast part here, what if analysis. You're gonna to go to the data table. It's gonna give you two options here. Um, row input cell and column input cell. This is a one-way table and your demand values, different demand values are actually put on a column. So you're gonna leave the row empty and you're gonna select the column input. Where is the original demand value, it's here. So I'm gonna select this. So what it means is it's gonna actually 
um, change the values of this 1000 in B5, B7 from the listed values under demand in the table, which is zero, 1000, and 2000. Okay? So if I hit automatically, it's going to create this table and compute all these values for you. If it didn't automatically calculate this number for you, you need to go to the file to options. If I can find options here. Options, options, and then find the formulas. So make sure that this is this automatic is radio button is checked. Okay. It is possible that the second one is selected for some reason. If it's not, select the automatic and hit OK. If you do that, next time that you create another one-way table, the table is going to automatically for generate the numbers for you. Compute, not generate, compute the numbers for you. Um, you could also do that in here. You go under formulas, come to the calculated options, and make sure that the automatic is checked. Okay. Well, so that's what I wanted to wanted to show you here. Let's go back to the lecture slide. All right. So make sure that the automatic option is selected. This is in Windows PC. It should be similar to Mac. Too. So, and are we going to do another modeling here? Um, before that, I want to see if you have any questions. Any questions? All right, so let me close I have a, this. I yes. have a good question. Um, the uh, steps to create that data table, are they in the slides anywhere? Uh, yes, it was in the first part of the slide. And also, it was recorded in our previous Zoom video. And it's uploaded on here. OK, thank you. We're gonna do another example here, so you're gonna you're gonna see it again. All right, so healthcare premium model. Um, suppose that the human resources manager of a fast-growing startup company wants to project the total healthcare premium cost over the next five years. Currently, there are thirty uh, salaried employees and seventy hourly employees. The total hundred. HR manager projects that the number of salaried and hourly employees will grow fast by a range of 15% for salaried one and 25% for hourly employee. Okay. So that, that means that next year we're going to have 15% more salaried employee and 25% more hourly employee. The annual healthcare premium paid by the employer. Currently, average is ten thousand and seven hundred dollar for the salaried employee, and six thousand and five hundred dollar for the hourly employee. Okay. And also, the premium um, has the cost is going to grow um, by a rate of four percent per year okay, over the next five years. Assume this um, rate continues for the next five years. So. What you want to do, you want to see what would be the um, total healthcare premium cost for this company, given that right now they have 70 hourly employee and 30 um, salary employee. And, um, you know, given that the healthcare premium cost for salary is just $10,700 for the salary one and $6,500 for hourly. And the number of employees grow 15% and 25% for salaried and for the hourly. And knowing that the, the, the premium cost is also going to grow um, by 4%. So you want to see what would happen, how, how much would be the total premium cost of this company after five years. Okay. So, first of all, again, it's not a good practice to just jump into the Excel. First, try to do an influence chart. So we start from the end. What is the end? It's the goal, the objective. What is the objective? The total healthcare premium cost of this company. So that's the um, rectangle, grade color rectangle on right. And then we try to figure out 
what is going to cause that? What is going to impact or affect these um, premium costs? Okay, we know that, okay, the total premium cost for salary is one of the factors. The other factor is the total premium cost of hourly employee. Okay? All right. So now we're going to go one step back before this. So we're gonna figure out okay, what's gonna impact each of these inputs. For example, what is going to impact the total premium of salary employees and for the hourly. So let's focus on the salary employee. For the hourly, it's gonna be the same. So I'm not gonna show that. So you start from the, uh, this is the continuation of the previous slide. So the total premium of for salary is going to depend on two factors. One of the factors is the number of salaried employees that you have um, each year, okay? Um, so, and, and also the annual growth of um, employee, right? And even though th those two factors can be broken down to other factors, for example, the number of salaried employees depends on the initial number of salaries employees um, and also the growth rate for them, the annual premium for salary, initial annual premium for salaries, and also annual increase per gross of the premium cost. Okay, so now that we figured out every um, part of it, looks like it, we can actually move to Excel. So we want to build an, an organized, readable, dynamic model what is dynamic means? It means that try to have inputs, decision variable, all of these organized. And when you do calculation, do not put all the values in the cell, try to use reference. Okay, references based on the inputs, all the inputs. So that means your model dynamic. Um, so for example, if one of the inputs is 100 and you wanna put it in a computation, reference that cell instead of using 100, putting the number value 100 in that cell, reference that so that if you change the input, your model will just going to automatically be updated. So that's why you, you, it's called your model dynamic or live, right? And we are gonna also use other functionality of Excel. For example, we're gonna use round function to round to the nearest um, integer value. And also you can use other functions such as sum product. Um, and also for um, more readability, and we're gonna use graphs, for example, uh, scatter charts or line chart. Then we're gonna do what if analysis, the one-way data table, two-way data table, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to download the, um, one of the Excel files, So it's called healthcare premium model. Done. You can download that, but I'm gonna create it here. So you have, have that as a reference, but try to um, try to start from the beginning from like a scratch um, Excel, but you can have that as your reference. So I have it here for my reference. Okay. Right. So this is a new Excel file. And I want to create uh, the model. Uh, first of all, what we need to do, we need to import the styles. So what you can do, if you if you just click on the styles here, you don't see the my input, my output, any of them here. So what you need to do, you need to open the my style file, Excel file, and then import the styles. Okay. So right now I have opened the my style file here. It's open. Now that it's open, I can go um, 
my style merge styles and then click on my styles hit okay and it's going to bring all over here so now it's here okay see my calculation my decision variable one input output and all right okay good so let's just start modeling the human model First of all, I'm going to name this sheet um, Healthcare Premium Model. You can also save it with the same name, with the same name. So I'm going to put the uh, new model also here Healthcare Premium Model. And I'm going to do bold. Um, here, I'm going to list all the inputs and the calculation, output, et cetera, that you want. So starting with inputs. What are the inputs? So inputs, we have um, the number of employed for hourly and for salary. So number of employed. In the right alignment. And here I'm going to put salary employee. And here I'm going to put hour. Okay. So the number of salary employee is 30, the number of hourly is 70 right now. Uh, the next input is the employee growth rate. Gross rate, I'm going to put GR. So GR means gross rate. And for salary, it was 15%. For hourly, it was 25%. The next input was the average premium. Average premium. For the salary, it was $10,700. $10,000 for hourly, it was $6,500. And these are my inputs. So, so this is our input. Another input that we had was the premium um, gross rate, right? The premium gross rate, premium gross rate. And that was 4%. So I'm going to use the my input style here. Okay. So later, when, the, when our model grows, I'm going to be going to see a lot of different numbers here. Just by looking at it, you know, without a second, like in, in a, just a moment, you can realize, okay, these blue ones are inputs. And that's make your model very readable. So let's just start modeling. So here I'm gonna create the model. What I want to do, the model, I want to um, list all the inputs and all the computation that we need to do for, uh, which is the um, premium cost for the company after five years. Okay? So what, when I, what I need to do is uh, year zero, which is this year, uh, next year, year one, year two, year three, year four, and five, and seven. Okay. Years from now. Uh, I'm going to start with this year, next year, the year before that, and then I can actually just grab this instead of just typing there. And then put them here. Okay. And um, on the column, I'm going to have different um, values that or computation that we're going to have. For example, the number of employees is going to be different. It's going to change, for example. Right? So, for example, I'm going to here is a number of employees. And for employees, we have salary and we have hourly. So, I'm going to put it in different steps. Then because this number of employee 
belongs to the two column, I can actually merge it. It would be one column. And then we have the average premiums. Average premium, the average premium again, salary and hourly. I will copy and paste it here. Salary, hourly. Again, because this average premium uh, is the title for a label for both of these columns, I'm going to merge it. Right, so that's number of employees, salary, um, hourly, average premium. The next one is the total cost of um, total cost or say healthcare health cost. Okay, cost. And what I'm going to do because we're going to have large numbers, I'm going to um, show them in thousand of dollars. So that means that if it's ten thousand, I'm not going to show ten thousand. I'm going to just show ten. The values let's say here that's all in ten. So for salaried, for for hourly and total. All right, so now we have all the numbers for this year, okay? We know what is the number of employee? We know that the number of employees salaried one are 30. So I'm not gonna put 30 here by hand. That's not a good practice. That doesn't, doesn't make your model alive or dynamic. So instead I'm gonna reference it, okay? So I'm gonna reference it to my input, this cell, okay? So it says B4, if you look here, right? It says B4. So instead of do that, again, we can actually use the name range here, but see what happened. We have the number of employees for salaried and for hourly. So I cannot really use the, um, you know, the way the formula that I did it before that I just, just selected because there are two values in one, one row. So what I can do is if you click on this cell, which is B4, here it said B4, you can actually change the name here, okay? So I'm gonna say number of employee salaried. Click enter, now the name of the cell is changed. Same here, I'm gonna say number of employee. Already, that's a large name, too long of a name, but it's better than B5. So B5 is employee gross rate salary. Employee gross rate salary. C5 is for hourly, I'm gonna change it to employee gross rate hourly. This is B5, B6, which is the average premium for salary. I'm gonna change it to average premium salary. This is C6, I'm gonna change it to average Average premium hourly. So now, and for this one, because it's just one value, I can use the formula selection. Okay. Now this one is also premium GR. Okay. So now instead of B4 here, I can say number of employee salaries. So it says number of employees salary. It is much more readable, okay? So for hourly, I can say the number of hourly. Okay? So this is much more readable than just B4 and C4 and et cetera, et cetera. So for the average premium, average premium, I'm gonna also um, link it, average premium salary. I'm gonna link it here too for hourly. 
So the healthcare costs for salary, what, what, is, what is the healthcare cost for salary this year? The total healthcare cost. Well, we know that the, we have 30 employee salary and the, the average premium cost is 10,700. So we need to multiply 30 by 10,700. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply, again, it has to be dynamic. So I'm gonna use this table. The number of salaried employee multiplied by the average premium for salary. So we said that it's in ten it's in thousand dollar. So what we need to do, we need to divide this by one thousand. So the number shown is two hundred and twenty. And this is um, currency. So okay. So for hourly, I'm going to multiply the number of employee hourly by the average premium hourly and then divide that by 1,000. This is also dollar value, currency. What is the total? The total is just the summation of these two values. Hourly and salary, 476. Okay, all right. We computed all the values for this year. What's gonna happen next year? Next year, the number of employee for salary is gonna grow 15% and the number of employee, the hourly ones are gonna grow 25%. Um, and also the average premium is gonna change for them as well. So uh, next year, the number of salaried employee is gonna be this year's employee multiplied by one plus the average rate for employee growth, employee growth rate for salary. Okay. So by hit enter, as you see here, we're gonna get 34.5. Um, it's okay number, but it would be much more sense if you're rounded, right? You can't have 34.5 people. Okay. So I'm gonna use round function to it. So before this B12, after, right after the equality sign, I'm gonna say round. It's gonna open up a uh, parenthesis here. Everything's gonna go in the parenthesis. Then I'm gonna go at the end and put a comma here. The comma, and after the comma, it's the number of digits. How many digits you want? I want actually zero decimal points. I'm gonna close the parenthesis here. So it actually rounded up the 34.5 to 35. Okay. Now let's do that for the number of employee hourly. So the number of employee hourly it's going to be 70 for this year, multiplied by one plus the growth rate, which is 25% here, but I'm gonna reference it to make my table alive. I'm not gonna put just 25%, I'm gonna reference it to the original input cell, okay? Then I'm gonna close the parentheses, hit okay. Again, this one has um, you know, decimal numbers, so I'm gonna use the round function here again, round function. Okay, I'm gonna put common zero, round it up to eight. Okay. How about the average premium? The average premium is going to be this year premium with a growth rate of 4%. So that means that it's going to be this value multiplied by one plus this rate. And for hourly, again, it's going to be this value multiplied by one plus gross rate of, which is the same for both. Okay. So the salaried, uh, the total healthcare for salaried going to be the number of salaried employee, which is 35, multiplied by the premium average premium cost for salaried employee. divided by thousands, okay? Because these numbers should be in thousands. 
Hi, Professor, I'm sorry. Um, could you just really quick show the um, formula that's increasing the percentage to the next year? I like. Oh, mind a little bit. It's one plus right, this value. So let me let me actually clear this up. I'm gonna do redo this. Okay. So the number of salaried one for the next year, it's gonna grow by 15%. How, how do we compute that for the table? I'm gonna put equality sign. Then it's going to be 30 from this year, multiply by a star. I'm gonna open a parenthesis. How it's gonna rate? It's gonna be one point. Uh, that means um, this year, which is 30 plus 15% multiplied by 30, okay? So instead of doing that, I'm gonna say one plus this value. And I'm gonna use the round function to round it up, round it to the nearest integer value. Did that help? Um, yeah, I'm just getting stuck. Like it's it's just telling me I like have the argument wrong. So I'm just trying to figure out which function, I'm... round function. Yeah. So, um, I don't mean to hold back the class, but um, on mine I have equals round parentheses b12 times one plus the employee growth rate salary, and then it's okay. telling me that I um I've entered too few arguments. Okay. Do, are you using the round function yet? Yes. You need the she needs the comma and the zero. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. got it. Okay, that's what I missed. Yes, because you, you need to use the number of digits here. That's the second argument here. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. So for how about hourly? For hourly, it's going to be the total healthcare cost for hourly is going to be the number of hourly people, which is this cell, multiplied by the um, premium cost, average premium cost for that, divided by 1,000 because these values should be in 1,000. Um, I'm gonna just use the format printer here. So it's gonna round it up and use dollar value here. And the total is just going to be this, this value plus this value. Or you can use the sum function, okay? S-U-M, the sum function, and then just grab these two and hit okay, All right? So now the second, the second row, which is year next year, which is year one, this is actually dynamic because it has been, all the cells have been computed based on the previous actually computation. So I can actually, instead of like doing another round of tedious computation, I can just drag it this down to five years, for so five years, and it's gonna compute all the values for me automatically, uh, very nicely, right? Okay? And my input here, this is actually my output, so I'm gonna use the output color, which is the gray color. Personally, I don't like gray color, but what uses because as I said, my the output is the most important probably cell in your Excel file, and it has to be you know, a, a better color that is more easily uh, seeable. So I would go with like, you know, yellowish color, but this is how the work uses. All right. Um, so that was the first part. So what we computed the first part of the question, the question in, in the problem was, what would be the total cost, premium costs of healthcare for this company? after five years, it's, it's actually um, 2 million point five thousand for um, about 25, 000, 25 times, about three times what is, uh, what is now. So the next part of the question or um, the model that would ask us was to, let me share it again this with you. So it says that we use the round function. Oh, let's do um, 
scatter chart. So before we do a scatter chart, we need to do the premium growth rate. Right now, we don't have anything to show except for the years. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a combined chart for our analysis. Um, this is a question. How does the annual increase in premiums that the uh, premium growth rate in healthcare costs would impact the total cost of salaried employees, the total cost of um, hourly employees, and also the combined total cost? Um, what type of what if analysis we need to do? So what this question is asking us to do, it says, the computation that we did in the extension so far was based on the gross rate of 4% for the premium cost of um, the sum of 4%. What if actually it was a different number? So that means that we're gonna have to do it, for example, for gross rate of 3%, 2%, 5%, 6%. So we're gonna have to do it for a range of different numbers, right? And as you remember that we did a lot of computation for 4%. So if you want to do it for four five percent, for example, you need to do um, all of this tedious computation again and again for six percent, for two percent, for three percent, right? But instead of doing that, Excel actually has a, a best, uh, a, actually very uh, efficient functionality for the um, one day table. So one day table is when you want to do what if analysis by changing one input and seeing the effect of that input on multiple computation. Okay. So here, what's gonna what we're gonna do? We're gonna create a one-way table here. I want to share. Ah, yes. Right. So this two thousand and two million. These are in 1,000. So this, this value, this is our total cost in five years, given that the gross rate of the premium cost, healthcare cost is 4%. But this number is not under our control or the company's control. This is based on the insurance companies. And they can change this number, right? So it's very wise to do what if analysis on this number. What if it was 6%? What if it was 7%? What if actually it was 3%, right? So we need to do what if analysis on this, right? And instead of like doing it, say say here, I put 5% and 6% and 4% and do another type of table here, all of these TS computation, I can create a one-way table. here. So this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna here say one-way data table. Make it bold to stand out and then I am going to use the first or, or um, the, the factor that they want me to change, which is the premium growth rate. Premium growth rate. And see the impact of that on um, the five year, the total healthcare. Cost in five years. Okay. So here I'm gonna go with the for the cost for salaried employee, for hourly employee, and for the total employee. Okay. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna leave the first row or the first cell under the factor that I want to see the impact on, which is the premium growth rate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it empty. And I'm gonna list all the values that I want to see um, you know, the computation for. 
for example, the growth rate right now is 4%. I want to see for 2%, 3%, 5%, 6%, 7%, up to 10%. Okay? Um, and I'm going to also include the 4% here. So I'm going to say, okay, 2% here, 3%. And instead of like putting 4%, 6%, if the incrimination number increase in rate is the same, which is 1% here, you can actually just, after you put two numbers, you can actually drag it down. And it's gonna create for you all the numbers that you need. So these are all the premium press um, growth rates. And what you need to do, you need to specify in the first cell under other value, under other columns, um, what they mean, okay? What, that's just the currency of your earnings. Um, when I did the 2% and the 3% and then I dragged, it pasted a bunch of 3%. So did I did do- you, Did you also select 2%? So select 2% and 3% together. Okay. Not just one of them. And drag Okay, it down. thank you. That was the difference. Thank you. Sure. So a cell under salary, you need to specify what that means, okay? So the total salary, you, and, and that's going to be equal to this value here, okay? Because this value that we want to compute is after five years, okay? So it's going to be cell F17, okay? This value, it's going to be um, hourly after five years. And I have to specify here total cost $1,000. That's not an issue. And this is total, so this is going to be equal to this value, right? Okay, now. Now see the magic of Excel, right? So without actually doing any computation here, I'm just going to grab this table from the first cell on the premium GR, which is an uh, empty cell, okay? And grab all this, and I'm going to go to data. What if analysis here? It's data table, the third one, right? Because this is a one-way table, you need to only pick up one of these, row or column because my premium growth rate, different values are listed under the column, right? I'm gonna leave the row empty and I'm gonna go to the column. And here you need to specify what is the cell reference here that you want to change. The cell reference here is the premium growth rate, which is right now in our computation is 4%. So that's actually B8, okay? And if you look at it, it says, dollar sign B, dollar sign A. That means that it's absolute value. That means that it's not gonna, you know, drag down to a different value. It's just gonna stay fixed on 4%, okay? So now if I hit okay, it's gonna compute the total healthcare cost for salary, for hourly, for total. Then the gross rate is 4%, 2%, 5%, 6. For all these values, just gonna automatically compute it, okay? So now, as you see here, it has actually a little bit of, um, it doesn't look like because it has decimal numbers, so you can actually just use the paint format painter and then grab all these values to make it neater. Okay, so I'm sorry, Professor. Do you mind doing that one more time? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So it was messy here because it has like three decimal points here, and I didn't want the decimal points to, I wanted to go away. So from my original table, I click on one of the cells and I here on the clipboard, I click on the format painter. So now- oh, I meant, I'm, uh, I meant the, the making into a the data table, I meant, sorry. Oh, the data table? Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. No problem. All right. So we are here at this point that we listed all the growth rate that we want to investigate the impact on, on salary, on hourly, and our total cost. So under the salary, hourly, total cost, under the factor that we want to see or the, or the output that we want to see, I have referenced all the values here. So this is V17. 
This is hourly, which is G17. This is total cost, which is H17, okay? So after doing that, I'm gonna select uh, this actually um, cell, which is under premium GR and it's empty. It's intentionally left empty, okay? I'm gonna select all these values from total up to the 10%. So it's gonna be this rectangle. Then I'm gonna go to data tab. Under forecast here, there is a what if analysis. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna pick the data table. I'm gonna leave the row input empty. Why? Because what the impact that I wanted to see the change is this growth rate have been listed under one column, right? You see 2%, 3%, 4%, 6%. They are listed in one column and not row. So I'm gonna leave the row cell empty and I'm gonna, for the column input, I'm gonna say specify what is the cell reference that we want to change instead of these values and use these values. That's actually the premium growth rate 4%, okay? Now, if I hit okay, what, what is gonna do the Excel? Excel is gonna change 4% to 2%. And it's gonna compute all these values, the salary, um, total healthcare cost, the hourly total healthcare cost and the total healthcare cost. And it's gonna put it on these uh, three cells here. And then it's gonna change it to 3% and then we're gonna compute all of these values and I'm gonna put it here. And then it's gonna change it to 5%, 6%, 7%, so for all of them, we're gonna compute all the values that you have listed here automatically and it's gonna right away show it for you, right? Okay, let me make it look nicer. All right, so if you look for 4%, you see that actually this is, uh, I'm just gonna do a standout, I'm gonna make it the front red here, red color. So this is actually the 4% that we already had. So it's seven, seven, 794 um, under salary for hourly is 17.08 for total is 225.42. Yes, Michael. Um, when I did it, um, I just followed your directions, but I, it's giving me 4% for every single um, cell. Uh, okay. Single. Did, you, did you leave the, on the cell under premium GR empty? I did. Okay, and under that, you listed all in the column, you listed all the values, 2%, 4%, et cetera. Yeah. And under this total, the salary, did you reference these? I did. Okay. Um, did you also grab the first cell when you were doing this? I did. Um, what if analysis? And also you put it in a column and leave the, the table, the row empty here, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, go to formulas. Okay. Calculation option. Uh huh. Is the automatic selected? Oh, that, that's it. Thank you. I know you said that earlier. I apologize. Thanks. All right. So now we actually, as you see here, this is super helpful, right? It, 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 it does. Um, and imagine this tedious computation that we did here. Imagine it was like 10 times this, you know, 10, you know, 5,000 of rows. Um, so instead of doing all of those computation uh, for different values by changing this and then keep track of them and record them. Um, by using this uh, one way table, you can just automatically for different number of values compute multiple um, outputs here, okay? Very helpful. All right, so next what we want to do that the uh, lecture slide asked us to do was to create a, a line chart. So we wanna, we wanna, we wanna see by eyes, like a graph, uh, the impact of growth rate on uh, the total cost, premium cost for hourly employee, for salary employee, and for total. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to select all of these values for salary, hourly, and total. Then I'm gonna go to Insert tab on the charts group here. I'm gonna go to this, go to the line chart, okay? So line chart, the first guy here. I'm gonna select it, okay? So this chart is appeared for me. It, it shows the three colors um, line chart here. First of all, I'm gonna give you the, the title. Okay? So I'm gonna say, say 
healthcare costs, um, premiums in five years. But also, this is kind of wrong because on the x-axis, instead of the rate, it just shows one, two, five, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna select data here, okay? Right click on the chart, go to the select data. It's gonna open up this window for you. On the right window, right side of the window, it says one, two, three, that's your x-axis. Click edit, okay? And then uh, select actually these values. I need okay, okay. So now if you look at the graph, it changes to 2%, 3%, 4%, et cetera, et cetera right? So also um, it uses, the, uh, uh, not drawing, but it doesn't use the original uh, labels series that I want. So for example, series one right now is the blue one, which is for salary one, okay? So I want to change it. So I'm gonna hit edit here. And I'm gonna use the, instead of just typing, I can actually use the salary cell here, hit okay. So it changed the blue line salary from series one. Next, I'm gonna click on the series two, which is actually the orange one. And I'm gonna hit edit. And in the series name, I'm gonna pick the hourly one, okay. And I'm gonna go to series three, hit edit. And on the series name, I'm gonna pick the total. All right, so, what else we can do to make this chart more readable? Right now, it doesn't it doesn't tell us what the um, axis X and axis Y is. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this uh, plus sign here, and I'm going um, on the axis title. Okay, so it's gonna pop up the axis title for me. I'm gonna click on the <clears throat> axis title for X row, um, and I'm gonna say the gross rate, premium gross rate, premium GR. And the Y axis, I'm gonna say total cost in $1,000. All right, good. Now everything is readable. We know what these three lines are. Uh, we know that the blue one is for salaried employee. The orange one is for the hourly. The gray one is for the total. And we know that the on y-axis we have the total cost of healthcare after five years for this company, um, and the x-axis shows us the um, you know uh, different growth rates. Professor, could you um, show again how you were easily changing the name of the legend? Yes, sure. The, uh, for, for the series name or for the uh, um, x-axis and y-axis? The series name. Oh, the series name. So you click on the, um, right click on the graph. You're gonna see this menu. From this, select, select data. Select data. All right. So here on the right, on the left hand left uh, window, it shows um, series one, series two, and series whatever. Okay. You click edit here, and then you can change the name on the series name. Okay. All right. Okay. What was the next question? The next question was. Um, let me share this with you. So we did this part, the this whole part. It says which type of body analysis is needed. It's a one-way table. Okay. So in one-way table, you can see the impact of different values of one factor over multiple outputs. Okay. For example, hourly employee. Um, premium cost, uh, salaried employee, uh, premium cost and total cost. So impact of one factor on multiple in uh, multiple computation will happen. Um, now, what if you wanted to see the impact of two factors um, 
on, on the system. If you wanted to see the impact of two factor, you can only see the impact on one output, okay? So it has to be either total cost or hourly cost, hourly employee or the salary. And you cannot do it for the three of them at the same time, okay? So if you wanna do a what if analysis of the impact of different values of two factor in your system, you're gonna do a two table, what is called a two way table, okay? In a two way table, you can see the impact of different values of two factors on one output, single output, okay? So this is what I want to do. Um, what is my All right. So I want to see what is the, so before that, we, we actually saw the impact of growth rate, premium growth rate on the total cost and hourly, um, hourly, hourly employed cost and the salaried employed cost, right? Uh, now I want to see the impact of the growth rate on the our employee. So right now we know that the hourly employee are going to grow 25% per year and the salaried one are going to grow uh, 15% per year. Now we want to do analysis on this. What if actually it wasn't 15% and 25%? What if it was like 14%, 10%, 20%? Uh, and also for the hourly, it was 30%, 35%, okay? So we want to do this analysis based on these two factors for different values, but we can only do it for one output. So we have to pick what, what output we want to do. Do you want to do it for, um, um, you know, we're going to do it actually on the total cost because that includes both the um, hourly, sal hourly, hourly employee and also salary employee. Okay? So let's create a two way table, two way data table. I'm going to make this bold. And in the table has several column and several rows. So you can use the column labels to list one of the factors and the, um, the rows for another factor. For example, suppose that I want to use the hourly growth rate, hourly growth rate on the columns and the salary Growth rate here. Okay. Salary employee growth rate. Okay. Um, this here. All right. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here uh, because it's it's our break time. Then I'm gonna pick up after this. All right. So let's have a, about a 15 minutes break. You can so you know um, refresh yourself, get a drink or a snack or whatever you wanna do. Um, uh, I I need to drink some water because my mouth is. Um, the recording. Okay, so let's recap. What we wanted to do, we wanted to actually build a two-way table to study the impact of different values of two factor, which is the uh, salary employee growth rate and also the hourly employee growth rate on uh, the total premium cost for this company after five years. Okay. So um, this is so far what we have done so far. So. Uh, a table has a row, um, like column and rows. Um, you can actually put any of the factors on either column or row. So I have picked to do the hourly employee growth rate on um, the column. So I'm gonna go from, so right now hourly employee is 25%. I want to go from 15% to 35%. So I'm gonna go 15%, I'm gonna go 20%. 
then I'm going to increase it up to 35. Okay, can go to up to 40, whatever you want. Okay, and here I want to do um, in front of the Saturday grocery on the rows. Uh, this is where I list the um, salary gross, the gross rate for employed salary, for salary, <laughs> employed salary um, here. So right now it's 15 percent. So I'm going to go from 5 percent up to, say, 25 or 30. Um, so let's just start with 5 percent here. And the next row, I'm going to go 10 percent. And instead of just typing it out, I can select both these two and then drag it down. It's going to create the next one by increment of 5 percent. I'm going to go up to 40, say. So I have 40 and 40, OK? You can, you know, these numbers are just random. So you can go up to, um, I don't know, even 100, more than 100. Yeah. Right, so let's see what happens here. I actually left this cell blank, OK? The first cell here, blank. This is actually your output. This is where you, you need to address your output. So I'm going to reference what I want to study the impact on, which is my output. This is the total healthcare cost after five years, okay? So I reference that. You can actually make your table a little bit neater. Um, I can actually use these bars. And this is my output. So I'm gonna also measure this. I'm gonna put this here. So, all right. Now, this is where you want to create the table, okay? You're gonna select from this right, this cell right here, that is the output, okay? Select this. And select all of the 40% hourly rate, all of the rate for the hourly employed GR, and also for all of the um, 5 to 40% for the salaried employee, right? Select all of these cells, go to the data tab, go to the forecast group, select the body analysis, the data table. This is very important, okay? You could actually make a mistake here, okay? So we have two factors, the hourly employed gross rate and the salaried employed gross rate, okay? The hourly employed gross rate are listed in, the values are listed in one row, okay? That means that, okay, 15%, 2%, 25%, 30%, they are all in one row, okay? So I'm going to say the, the hourly employee gross rate. Where, where is that located in my competition? The hourly gross rate is here. Okay, so for the row, I'm gonna select the hourly employee gross rate in my input. Okay, for the column, that's where your salaried employee gross rate are listed in different column, right? For, uh, are listed in one column, right? It's listed in one column, right? So here, I want to specify that this column the values on columns, that is 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. That is actually re is referenced to the salaried employee gross rate. It's in my input, which is right now 15%, okay? So um, this is what I told Excel. I told Excel that the hourly employee gross rate is listed in the first column, which is 15%, 20%, 25%. And the other factor, which is the employee growth rate for the salary, they are listed in one column, which is 5%, 10%, 15%, 15%. And in the first cell that um, is, is actually referenced to the total cost, that's what I want the Excel to compute for me based on these different values for the two factors. If I hit OK, and you have selected the automatic uh, that, I, that I showed you earlier on, if you hit OK, it's going to compute all these values for you. Okay, so as you see here, it's a little messy because it has the three decimal points. So what you can do is you can actually select one of these that are neater and then select the format painter. And then you can actually um, format these 
in a nicer and neater um, way. So right now the hourly is 25% and the uh, salaried one is 15%. So I can actually find it here. It's here. Um, 25 or two. 25. All right, that's that's about it. Um, we don't have to do any computation optimization. So you can see that um, the total cost based on different growth rates on the um, hourly employee and the um, salary employee. Uh, this table is kind of difficult actually to read because it it just has too many too many data, too many values. So um, as a human, actually, are, we are not good at two-dimensional numbers. Anyway, a, a one-way table, it's way better to understand. And also, we can't really plot this because we would need like a three-dimension, right? Um, so we would need like a one, a, an x-axis for the salary growth rate and a y-axis for um, the hourly growth rate and another z-axis uh, perpendicular to those two to represent the total cost. So it would be difficult to actually plot it. It's not impossible for tools to do that. I don't think Excel has that. I haven't seen that. Any question? All right, so we, we did the analysis here. So we are done with the <clears throat> part two. I'm gonna go to part three. Also make sure that you save your um, Excel workbook. I have too many programs and too many windows open, so my computer is slow. So this has because I want to change it. I don't want to change the All right, so please go ahead and download the conference planner model. There are two files uh, in Excel under the part three. Uh, that's conference planner model, Excel file, and there is another conference planner model done, okay? The done one is complete, okay? So um, that's for your reference, okay? So download the conference planner model that has like initial values on that we want to actually build it and um, solve the model, okay? Um, so try to work on the conference planner model, not the done one. The done one is complete. <clears throat> this is where I want to share this with you.
All right. So this is the third part of the part three of the expression uh, spreadsheet modeling. Um, and it's another actually problem. So this is a conference. It's a planning, a model for planning a conference. Suppose that a professor is organizing a small academic conference um, that consists of an optional Friday dinner and also a Saturday it's during the weekend. So uh, a Saturday, the conference is during a Saturday um, and sometimes because some people come from far away, so they might actually want to come a day earlier and stay for the night so they can actually catch on the morning for the conference. So that's why we have a, a kind of optional dinner for those people who want to um, come one day earlier and stuff. And, and so that's an optional Friday night dinner and then the whole day Saturday conference, okay? Um, we know that the conference, the planning and, and, and organizing conference is going to cost money um, to reserve a place um, to hold the conference and also for to serve the food, a snack, you know, um, gifts for the speakers or pay for the speakers. And there's also going to be revenues for the conference. For example, you can have conference registration fees and you can have sell, you know, the, the, the luncheon or the tape, the um, dinner um, so that you can make money. But some want to make a restaurant Constantly, you want to subsidize that. Right? So this is this is what the numbers we have. We have the past conference. They have charged between twenty four five to forty dollar um, for Friday night uh, optional dinner, and also between eighty to hundred dollar on average of ninety dollar for Saturday a Saturday conference program. And that's the registration fee for the conference. And this is the deal. We have uncertainty in our model. We don't know in advance. Um, suppose that. You want to actually build your model, plan your conference now. And you don't know actually how many people are going to attend the Friday night dinner and also to the conference. And you have to set the pricing for the dinner and also for the conference registration fee before you know the number of people who are coming. And the objective is you don't want to lose money. You don't really want to make a lot of profit, but you want to actually have like a positive balance. Okay. So that's a lot of a little bit of a small profit or no, on the positive side, you don't want your cost to be too much more than your um, revenues. Okay? So that's that's the problem. You want to have a small profit or positive balance sheet, um, given that you don't know how many people are going to attend. By setting the decision variable here is going to be your registration fee um, and conference dinner the uh, Friday night dinner. All right, so what you need to do before you jump into modeling? This doesn't look really a very difficult problem, but we're gonna see how we can actually formulate it. So the first step is to, a good practice is always to start with an influencer. So influencer is where you actually try to um, find all the inputs, all the relationship between and also all different segments and, and factors in, in the system, okay? So you start with the end goal in mind. The end goal or the objective is to have a, positive, a profit, right? So that's the profit is the, fu the function, the objective function. So you start with the total profit. Then we see, okay, what is, in, what is impacting the total profit? Well, revenue and cost, these are the two factors, main factors. What impacts revenue? Well, you can have fixed revenue, and you can have, for example, um, variable revenue. For the total cost as well, you can have fixed cost and variable cost. Um, all right. So, for example, for fixed revenue, uh, we can uh, the conference can have um, a sponsorship. Um, so there are there are different businesses who are um, willing to actually, for a small sum of money, to sponsor the program um, for branding. Um, and so that's a fixed revenue. It doesn't, doesn't matter how many, uh, you know, how many attendees you have, it's going to be fixed. And then you have got the, the variable um, revenue. The variable revenue depends on 
um, the pricing of registration fee and the conference, uh, the, the Friday night dinner, multiplied by how many attendees you have for the dinner and for the conference, okay? And the fixed cost is for renting the place to host the conference, which you usually get to SFSU, they do the Seven Hills rentals. And also for the journal, to print out journals, you might actually have a speaker, a, a gift for a speaker. So that's also a fixed cost. It doesn't matter how many attendees you have, you have to buy the speaker, um, the note speaker um, gift. And the valuable cost is going to be dependent on the Friday dinner, which is dependent on the pricing and um, the, uh, at the number of attendees. The Saturday food is another cost. The, also, the, you can actually, um, you have to pay for the parking. The parking is going to also cost you money. So based on all, all this, there, there's no other factor that you can actually imagine or think of. So we have, we are done with the first step, which is understanding the whole problem and figuring out all the factors, finding all the factors and inputs. And then we're gonna go to the modeling part. So I'm gonna open the conference planner model, um, not the done one, um, the incomplete one. Okay, and I'm going to share this with you. We're gonna solve it together. Uh, right. Okay. So on the top, we have, we can also name, it's a good practice to name your sheet. Okay, it says conference right now, we can name it for the conference model. model. And then here you, again, on the first cell, you write the problem subject, which is here, the California State University Production Operation Management Conference Planner. Then you have your inputs and random variables. So what are the inputs? We you know the inputs uh, is the, the number of people who are attending um, the dinner and the number of people who are attending the conference. And then we have the cost, the Friday dinner cost, um, the, and then for the conference on the next row that you see here for the Saturday breakfast, um, it's, it's gonna cost $15. That's the input that we have for Saturday night. Saturday lunch, we have $20 cost. For the program folder to put everything in on, on it, it's $3. For the parking permit, is $7. So the total cost for Saturday, um, you can just use the summation function and sum all this to give you the total Saturday cost. Okay, that's $45. And also if you click on these, they don't have a name, right? This is for example, B4. So we might be, we, we might have to, have to, it's a good practice to use the range names here. So I'm gonna um, use the create from selection and Friday dinner two, and then Saturday total. All right, next, um, for the fixed cost, there is the, it doesn't matter how many attendees you have, you're gonna have to pay for the place that you're holding the conference in, which is the Seven Hills Conference. It's gonna be expensive, $650. The 80 journals, uh, $15 each, because you have, you're have you gonna have like a printout without knowing the number of attendees. So you're gonna go, for example, 80, um, that's $1,200. The keynote speaker gift on the dollar, the staff assistant hundred dollar. The total fixed cost, you can just use the summation function to figure this out. So it's gonna sum all of these fixed costs for Saturday. That's about um, two thousand and fifty dollar. Okay. So this is also another important number that you want to use the name range for. So right now, his name is total fixed cost. Okay. What are the decision variable? The decision variable that you have, the only thing that you can con control here is actually the dinner fee and the conference registration fee. So we don't want to actually 
food uh, very expensive, make, make the um, dinner very expensive because otherwise, you know, people have come there for the conference, not for the dinner. So if you make it more too expensive, they don't, they're not going to come to the, um, for the dinner. So you might want to actually a little bit subsidize that. Um, so that's the decision variable we have. So I'm going to also uh, use the name range, range name here. So this $35 is dinner fee, as you see here. This $95 is the conference registration. And the calculate quantities, the variable cost, uh, they have the variable cost, which is the uh, Friday dinner. So what is the variable cost for Friday dinner? That is the cost of dinner was this cell multiplied by the number that show for the dinner. Friday dinner multiplied by attending dinner. Okay. So that's Friday dinner cost, variable cost. The Saturday conference, variable cost. That's the Saturday cost per person multiplied by the number of attendees in the conference. Right? That's $1,800. The total variable cost is just the summation of these two. You can use the sum, you can, or you can actually um, just add them up. Which is wrong. Sum these two terms. Okay, three thousand and five fifty dollars. How about the fixed revenue from a sponsorship? Suppose these are the, the inputs that we have. We have the apprentice hall, they have given $250. We want to have it for breakfast. The responsive learning, $150. Southwestern, $150. The McGraw Hill has also donated $150. The total fixed cost, we can just, uh, fixed revenue, I'm sorry. And we can just sum these up. And we have um, 700, which is not too much. Um, in a sponsor, sponsor um, revenue, which is a fixed, no matter how many attendees you have. Then we have sponsor. the variable revenue. So for the Friday dinner, the revenue that you have is um, the dinner fee that you charge multiplied by the number of attendees for the dinner. Five here, so that's $875. And for the conference uh, registration or conference revenue, that's the registration fee multiplied by the number of attendees in the conference. That's $3,800. These are all dollar values, right? Okay. The overall total cost, the, the total re variable revenue, that's the Friday dinner plus the conference registration Revenue, which is four thousand overall total revenue. That's your fixed revenue plus your total valuable revenue. That's five thousand and three hundred seventy-five dollar. Overall total cost again. That's your fixed cost. plus variable cost, total variable cost. That's $5,100. So the overall profit is the overall revenue minus the overall cost. So this cell, which is our output, is this cell revenue minus total cost. Um, I have I have changed the style for myself. As I said, in, in my opinion, the output, the, which is overall profit here, should actually stand out more than any cell. So the grayish color that the book uses, um, I do not agree with the book. Gray here, I just used um, my own style here. All right, so 
the number that here we have is actually good news for the conference organizer because it's a profit, it's a $275 profit, so they don't lose money. But this is based on uh, the situation variable that they charge $35 for the dinner, $95 for the conference registration fee, and they assume that 25 people are going to attend the dinner, 40 people are going to attend the conference. All right. Any any questions so far here? So let me go back to our slide to see what it helps to do. We actually want to. So what what we want to do is we want to um, we, we want to actually see um, because we don't know how many people are going to attend the conference. Um, we want to see the, the number of people who attend the conference and the number the, the conference registration fee. We want to see these two factors impact on the total profit for different values. So for example, what if instead of um, say 40 people attending the conference, um, 30 people attend the conference, or 32, or 42, or 38, or 50. You know? So we want to see for different number of attendees, um, which is not under our control. Um, we want to see the impact on the total profit, given that uh, for different values that we be able to charge for conference, conference registration. So we don't want to touch the... Um, uh, the Friday night dinner, because as, as we said, we cannot really <clears throat> increase that. So that's not really a decision variable. If, as I said, if you increase that too much, it's gonna, the dinner becomes, sounds too expensive. No one is gonna attend it because people are not there to, for the dinner, they are there for the conference, okay? So that, that's what we want to study. We want to study and investigate the impact of the conference registration fee, which is over, uh, under our control, and also the number of attendees in the conference, which is not under our control, and that's like kind of random variable. Right? So we want to see these two, um, the impact of these two on the total profit. All right. So I'm going to create a two-way table here. Because we are studying the impact of two factors, we need to use a two-way data table. A two-way, that means two factors. One, one way is for one factor, the other way is for the other factor. And we can only study the impact on one output. The output is total profit, okay? Um, so let me make this neat. Um, on, um, in a table, you have column and you have rows, so you can, put different values of one of the factors in rows in, in column and the other factor in, in, in different rows. So for example, here, suppose that I want to put um, uh, the number attending the conference. And here, conference registration. That's one of the decisions that I made. Okay. I'm going to have to move it down. So make room for it right here. Uh, I'm going to. I'm gonna leave this cell empty. And then start from here before the conference registration fee. So right now it was 95 dollars. So $95, I'm gonna go from say 75 um, to 95 or more than that. So you could go from 60, whatever, whatever you want, whatever number you want, but it doesn't matter because um, 
for seventy-five dollar even, um, you're not gonna make profit. It's gonna be all all cost. So it's gonna be negative. The balance is going to be negative. Seventy-five dollar, eighty dollar, and eighty-five dollar, ninety dollar, ninety-five dollar. So instead of just putting these values, I'm just gonna increase. I'm just gonna grab the two cell and I'm gonna drag it to the right. So it would generate the number for me automatically. Um, in front of the number of um, people on, on the different rows, I'm gonna list the um, different value, different number of attendees. So for example, we assume that right now we assume the 40 people are going to attend. So why not start from a smaller value and go beyond 40? So for example, let's start from 30 people. Based on our experience, people more than 30 people each each time actually at an the company. So we're gonna start at 30. I'm gonna go with say 30, 32 and 34. With um, increment of two, we could go with increment of you know, five. But, but because because actually this is a random variable, it's not under our control. So you might want to be more careful and use a smaller increment. So instead of like five, I'm gonna go with two. Um, so let's go up to say 50. Okay. All right. Next is okay. And then here is the same. All right. At that cell, which is the intersection of the rows and columns of these values, right? This is where your output want to be, okay? So you're gonna reference the output here. What is the output? The output is the total overall problem, okay? So I'm gonna reference that. Okay. You could also name it. Um, I can use the formula. So now it's not B36 is overall profit. And here in the table, I'm gonna say overall profit. Overall profit. So it's overall profit now. All right. Now is the magic time. I'm gonna grab this cell and extend it to all the cells that I want to be computed, including the rows and columns of the values that I have selected. And I'm gonna to go to data tab, and then in the forecast analysis, the for what if um, analysis, I'm gonna open up this. This is a little bit, again, can be confusing. You need to know which you put in the column, which you put in the, in the, in the row, because it's easily, um, it's, you can actually easily make mistakes. Right? So the confidence registration fee are listed in one row, right? The values are in one row, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So in the row, you have to say, these values belong to what reference cell? These are confidence registration fees. So it's this cell, okay? And for the column, you have listed the number of people attending the conference, the number of attendees, in different actually column, right? In, in one column, right? 30, 32, 34. So they are listed in one column. And what, what that cell should be referenced to, the number of attendees in the conference, which is this cell right here, okay? And now I hit okay, and it generates for me these values here. So they have, you have negative values here. And if you actually select the, um, the dollar and, and then make it neater. So the parenthesis actually shows the negative values where you actually lose money. You could go to the format um, to conditional formatting, which I don't have it here. Okay, it's here. Conditional formatting, less than. All right, so we already made it. Uh, professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, I did 
the data table and I came up with all, it all the same answer. Like every oh, yeah, again. So go to the formula and then this calculator here, calculation option, mm -hmm. make sure that the automatic is selected. It's in it's uh, it's selected automatic. So you have you have the same value. Mm -hmm. So for the data table I did for the the row I did the ninety five dollar the conference registration fee and then for the other one I did the attend attending conference uh, the cell with forty in it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how you have made a mistake. Uh, I can't tell. But um, the the things that are important here is that this cell should be referenced to the overall profit. Okay. And also, then you open up this um, body analysis table, you have to make sure that in the row, you say um, the, the conference registration fee are in here. So you have to sell this one. And the column should be the number of attendees. So it should be here. And if you hit OK, it should do all of this computation, which will already be done here. Okay, I know what I did wrong. I didn't reference the overall profit. I just typed it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Well, again, to, to make this nicer, so you, you would know that by just um, glancing, you, you know that whether you have made, made a profit or you have lost money, um, you can go to the home button, home tab here, the conditional formatting, and then less than, Zero. So the native values um, that have lost money or you know the costs are more than revenues um, by red color or red highlighting. So you know that if you make the conference registration fee seventy five dollar, um, no matter how many info, how many attendees you have, up to 50, which has been um, you know uh, unheard of, you're gonna lose money. If you make it 80, only you're gonna make money if 50 attendees will, which attend, which is that's also unlikely. 85, uh, you still could make money if 44 to up to 50, so more than 44 attends. So 90 is is a more sound decision. 95 is better. So 95 is our decision right now, okay? All right, any question? So with the conditional formatting, your output. Instead of instead of like highlighting the negative part, I could actually highlight the positive. For example, I should say if it's greater than zero, then make it green. The redundant All right. Any question? Professor, could you show how you put the parentheses on all the negative? Oh, yeah. Um, so I selected all these values and I used the dollar sign here, or you can go from this selection, you can use the currency one. So, and, and that's going to give you already like about three decimals. So you have to use this reducing the number of decimal to make sure that all the decimals go away. Uh, I couldn't see your screen, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, let me, I have to share the screen. Uh, do you see the screen now? Um, not, not yet. Okay, now I can see it. Okay. All right, so I select all these values and then I go to 
this this uh, which is for accounting, okay? And I have to reduce because it's gonna give you like about two decimal points. You can you can actually use this this um, click here to reduce the decimal to zero. So right now I don't have any decimal here, and it's gonna it's gonna actually put uh, the negative values in the parentheses and the positive values without the parentheses. But I already used the conditional formatting here. Um, you can actually clear the rule. Right. So it, this is how it looks like now, right now, okay? Um, again, I can use the conditional formatting to say that, for example, I want to um, emphasize the it says that I don't make money or lose money. So I can actually say, this is your option. Light red field with dark red sex, green, light red field. Okay. Thank you. All right. I think we are actually done for the, this session. There is no more thing to cover today. Any question? Um, hi, Professor. I was wondering when we would get one of our first assignments. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, probably be able to upload it by tomorrow. Um, I'm too tired for tonight, so 